the equivalent circuit and phasor development of practical transformer are being discussed using these concepts various performance measures such as voltage regulation and efficiency etc can be analyzed or can be calculated as a recap we have gone through the discussion on the ideal transformer so in the ideal transformer the flux was taken as a reference correspondingly the induced emf is calculated so that is using the equation minus n d phi by dt so this is for primary correspondingly the expression can be obtained for the secondary as well we have introduced the turns ratio so that particular is defined as the, as the number of turns in the primary to the number of turns in the secondary and with the help of turns ratio we are able to relate e1 upon e2 that is the induced emf of the primary to the secondary i2 dash upon i2 this is the reflected secondary current on the primary to the secondary current in terms of the turns ratio as we are able to draw the phase diagram phasor diagram so in this particular phasor development the flux was taken as a reference the induced emf is coming out to be 90 degree lagging so that has been drawn the v1 earlier has been written as minus of e1 so that minus of e1 is only to suggest the direction of the power flow so that particular sense has been taken care of from this in this particular phasor and onward so the negative sign has been dropped here say the only intention is to draw the primary on one side and the secondary phasor on the other side so this particular is again say for the lagging power factor load so i2 is marked likewise correspondingly the i2 dash is reflected on the other side so whatever has been covered in the ideal transformer that has been given as a recap and this we will be utilizing in the practical transformer as well so the content of this particular lecture sir what are the consideration of practical transformer so you know that the ideal transformer was made on some assumptions so those particular assumptions are taken accounted in this particular and that is giving rise to the practical transformer then we have come up with the development of the equivalent circuit then the transformer behavior at the no load is analyzed and corresponding phasor development is carried out so after having say brief introduction of the various steps we have developed the phasor diagram for the rl load which is the inductive load purely resistive load and the rc or you can say the capacitive load so first consideration that the winding resistances are accounted through the series resistance the effect of leakage flux is accounted through the series reactance the core losses are accounted through the shunt resistance which includes the accounting of both eddy current and the hysteresis loss the magnetic permeability is considered finite which is giving rise to the finite value of the magnetizing current to establish the flux so this particular effect is reflected as the magnetizing reactance and is modeled as shunt element so these particular are the considerations which are you can say they are deviating from the ideal transformer case therefore the manufacturing pr practices are adopted such that the effect of these practical considerations are coming out to be either limited or minimized to improve the performance so accounting these particular parameters the equivalent circuit looks like so here say this is the primary winding resistance that is represented by r1 primary leakage reactance so that is the jx1 correspondingly the secondary leakage reactance jx2 secondary winding resistance r2 this particular rm which is representing the core loss component this jxm that is representing the magnetizing current component or magnetizing reactance so this particular core loss and the magnetizing current they are taken from the supply 
so that's why this particular is represented only on the one side where say the windings are on both the sides so that's why the r1 jx1 on one side r2 jx2 on the other side when say these particular are accounted whatever say represented here that particular is coming out to be the ideal transformer so this particular is setting the background to have a development of the phasor diagram before that let us consider the case of practical transformer at no load so there is a consideration that current drawn by the transformer is only about 5% to its rated value at the no load only 5% of the rated current is drawn at the no load now there is an effort as made clear in the beginning that the values of resistance and reactances are kept small so this particular 5% of the rated current but getting multiplied by the small value of series element which are accounting the voltage drop so we can easily neglect that once that particular is neglected this particular i0 comes out to be the supply current likewise so this is what we have considered previously for the ideal transformer case where say the flux induced emf is lagging 90 degree to the flux supply or the input voltage is 90 degree leading or you can say it is drawn at the opposite side to reflect the primary and secondary separately now this particular i0 is taken from this source and the property of this particular magnetizing current is to be predominantly reactive so predominantly reactive means it the angle will be close to 90 degree but that is not 90 degree exactly because of the presence of this core loss component so this particular is marked likewise so that is the i0 this particular phi0 is coming out to be close to let's say 75 80 degree for practical consideration however the effort is made for large power transformer to have this angle closer to the 90 degree or so as mentioned that this particular i0 is now consisting of two components ic which is the core loss component of current and im which is the magnetizing current component so they are represented resolved and marked likewise as mentioned previously also that the flux is directed in the direction of the magnetizing current component and the core loss component will be the in phase component to the voltage supply voltage now the phasor development is carried out so this particular is illustrated through the four steps and i will be summing up those particular steps in a systematic manner but the steps are you can say when this particular switch is closed it will be carrying a current in the secondary so we will be representing the secondary as in a step 1 then the ideal transformer is modeled so that will be the step 2 then effect of this magnetizing current or you can say the no load current is accounted so that will be the third step and lastly we will be modeling this primary side or input side that will be the fourth step so in step 1 here say the load is connected likewise it is carrying current i2 so this particular is a load this particular become e2 will be the supply and the equation of this e2 is equal to v2 plus i2 r2 plus jx2 so this particular is a phasor relationship because we are dealing with the step ac quantity so you can say we can start with taking v2 as a reference the load current will be known because it is pertaining to the power factor the specified power factor load and we can find out the value of e2 once say that particular is known you can refer the secondary quantities to the primary side while making use of the turns ratio so the e1 is exactly equal to the a times e2 and i2 dash which is the reflected current on the primary so that will be i2 upon a 
third step is we have to account the effect of this no load current so here what we will be seeing that i1 is exactly equal to the i2 dash plus i0 and you can say that is dictated by the kcl however please be mindful that this is also the phasor relationship one says that we are able to calculate the i1 we know the value of e1 you can associate and find out the v1 as a phasor sum likewise so this is also the ac system concept and that we will do so from this point onward the phasor development is discussed what the phasor development this particular phasor development is carried out for the rl load or you can say the inductive load so v2 is taken as a reference correspondingly the i2 is marked so just to calculate the e2 you have to do the phasor sum so here say the i2 r2 which is in the direction of i2 that particular is marked it is j i2 x2 so that particular is marked 90 degree leading to this i2 r2 phasor or you can say 90 degree leading to the current phasor and these particular phasors are added which is giving rise to the e2 so this we have already studied in the ac systems very elaborately now the beauty of this phasor diagram is that it can be rotated by any angle so let's say it has been rotated by rotated by say 45 degree in the clockwise direction so this is giving rise to this we can rotate the same phasor by any arbitrary angle let's say i have rotated it by some angle such that this e2 is coinciding with the y axis why i am doing this because we have considered in case of ideal the e2 direction which is vertically downward so that particular is done and once say this e2 is identified you can identify the direction of flux which will be 90 degree leading you can identify the direction of e1 then it will be the v1 which is equal to the which is exactly equal to the you can say e1 marked in the opposite direction for the no load condition likewise so this particular process we have to repeat now going systematically for the rl load so the first equation that has been v2 plus i2 r2 plus jx2 is equal to e2 so that particular is marked for the rl load now we have to mark the effect of ideal transformer so that particular is shown in this particular diagram as mentioned that flux is coming out to be 90 degree leading to this induced emf that is marked corresponding to this the e1 is in the direction of e2 but that is managed by the turns ratio or you can say the length will be decided by the turns ratio i2 dash is marked opposite to the i2 so that is we are setting the background to have a phasor diagram separately for the primary and the secondary side so that is giving the analyzing aspects clarity on the analyzing aspects now the next i will be introducing the i0 so as mentioned previously for the no load condition the i0 is marked then it is added i2 dash plus i0 so that particular is giving rise to the primary current i1 once say that particular is done we have to carry out this particular v1 is equal to e1 plus i1 into r1 plus jx1 so we will be separately marking the phasor i1 r1 and j i1 x1 so that particular is marked but or you can say they they are to be added with the e1 so that particular is represented likewise and whole of the phasor diagram is now complete so these four steps are clearly written here as a 
just to have a reference and the phasor diagram is drawn systematically. The same steps will be repeated for the RC load and the resistive load likewise. So here see the RC load phasor diagram in this particular you can easily see that I2 is leading to the V2 so that is why it will be a capacitive load. In this particular I2 is in phase with the V2 so it is a unity power factor resistive load likewise. Once say the currents are marked you have to mark the I2 R2 that is in the direction of the current then it will be J I2 X2 that will be 90 degree leading to that one. And then you can say you can add easily the phasors to find out the E2. So here say for the RC the same steps the this is a, is a reference it has been rotated such that the E2 is coinciding with the vertical downward direction. Now we will be marking the effect of the ideal transformer. So flux even I2 dash are marked. Then we will be accounting the no load current and doing the summation to find out the I1. So that particular is done. Then we will be adding the voltage drop in the primary side winding to this particular E1 to account the supply voltage likewise so that is done. These four steps are completing the development of the phasor diagram. Similarly the process is repeated for the resistive load. So this particular phasor is rotated here E2 is now coinciding with the vertically downward direction. Then the ideal transformer case is introduced. So that is giving rise to the marking of flux, marking of even I2 dash likewise. Then we will be accounting the effect of no load current, doing the addition of no load current to I2 dash. So that is giving rise to the I1 that is marked. After that we are doing the E1 plus I1 R1 plus J I1 X1. So the voltage drop associated with the primary windings are added to this E1 which is to obtain or you can say mark the supply V1 that particular is done. So we have gone through the phasor development for all possible load combinations. This is to set aside the apprehensions. I am requesting that you please attempt this phasor diagram on your own for a practical case or where say the data is specified and that particular when say you are drawing the three diagrams on the same scale the effect of unity power factor, inductive load and the RC load can be accounted clearly. So as a summary we have gone through the systematic development of the equivalence circuit. Effect of no load has been analyzed but the point is that the no load current is predominantly magnetizing. Now the phasor development has to be carried out through the four steps listed in a sequential manner the load side development, ideal transformer stage accounting the effect of no load magnetizing current and then go for the input side. The equations are summarized likewise and lastly the phasor development has been carried out but you are requested to go through the development on your own for practice. Development can be carried out for the zero power factor inductive load which is also sometimes asked and you can do a practice likewise. For in the next we will be referring the transformer equivalent. For further reading you can refer this particular text.